Are you fresh out of college and looking for an exciting career? Sure, you've considered becoming a police officer, even a firefighter, but you're looking for something with more action. After all, police officers eat donuts and firefighters wait around for the next big fire more than anything. So you're considering working for the Secret Service Agency, which means you get to wear fresh Ray-Ban and Armani suits, all while protecting some of the most important people on American soil. Now that's excitement worth bringing bragging about at Sunday dinner. But what exactly goes into training and becoming a Secret Service agent aside from the cool shades and tapered suits? Are there special qualifications? Do you have to be taller than Tom Cruise? He's a little man. To answer these questions, let's look at exactly what Secret Service agents do. Turns out that not every agent in the Secret Service is affiliated with the United States President. According to the job site, Criminal Justice Degree Hub, the United States Secret Service employs around 6,500 people People with jobs in two categories, protection and investigation. The category of protection is one you're most likely familiar with. However, what most people don't know is that the Secret Service also plays a big role in the investigation of financial crimes, including the production of counterfeit money. But what's the difference between people dressed like characters from Men in Black and your local police force? Well, like the police, the Secret Service are authorized to carry firearms and execute warrants. However, unlike the police in enjoying their donuts at your local diner, these agents can make an arrest without a warrant. Why? Well, as long as someone is considered a threat to a top official, then there's nothing standing between you and a pair of handcuffs. Same thing goes if you're suspected of being involved with a financial crime that affects a federally insured institution like a federal bank. So it's safe to say that the Secret Service carries a lot of weight in the country's security detail, but why and how did that even get started? Well, to understand that, we need to look back at their humble beginnings. July 1865, when the Secret Service was an investigative unit that excluded exclusively looked at forged currency. At the time, it's believed that one third and a half of the money in circulation was counterfeited. They also handled theft, bootlegging, smuggling, and fraud, but you get it. The Secret Service had a completely different job back then. It's also important to note that 1865 was the year that the 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, was assassinated in a theater booth, which arguably would not have happened if he had today's Secret Service detail. But the United States government did not deem the president's assassination as enough of a reason to assign him and his cohorts a security detail. That is until 1894, when the agency probed a group of gamblers only to find that they had an assassination plot against President Grover Cleveland. I guess you can say after that, the United States finally got the memo. Oh, these leaders are pretty important. We should do something about protecting them, maybe? Roosevelt is reported to be the first sitting president to have an around-the-clock White House detail to protect him, which prompted the FBI to officially establish the Secret Service as a branch of the Department of Justice. The final touch came in 1917, when Congress passed a law making it a federal crime to threaten the president. And the rest is Secret Service history. Since then, all sitting presidents, vice presidents, and their families are trailed by a security detail. Yep, this also includes ex-presidents, if you can believe it, just with smaller teams. Now that we know a little bit about the history of the Secret Service, let's get into what it takes to become a special agent for one of the highest ranking agencies in the world. Firstly, you must be a U.S. citizen between the ages of 21 and 37. You shouldn't have any visible tattoos or piercings, not to mention that you have knee perfect vision. In terms of education, a prospective agent must possess some type of bachelor's degree or qualifying post-secondary education certificate. If you thought that this job required brawn and no brains, then you'd be wrong, especially considering that the force is most interested in those with superior academic achievement. Then you'll need to pass the written special agent entrance exam, the applicant physical abilities test, a number of interviews, then the polygraph medical and physiological exam. Just when you think you're in the clear, there's also the background investigation and another interview, this time by a hiring panel made up of high-ranking officials. Then you're hired. But hold on there, don't go running to the closest Ray-Ban store to celebrate, there's more. The infamous Secret Service training. Hold off on those donuts because this 10-week training program followed up by a special 17-week special agent training course at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center in Glencoe, Georgia will dominate your life. 
And if you think this is just a test you can fail and retake, then you're wrong. Candidates must pass both training programs on their first attempt, otherwise it's sayonara. Now, let's say you've passed the exam with flying colors and even got all of your suits perfectly tapered. Looking good. If you're interested in protecting the higher-ups, hate to break it to you, but it's reserved for the most senior agents who've spent their formative years keeping watch over empty staircases. Well, the president gives his State of the Union address. But here you are, years later, a senior agent, and you're now assigned to the president's personal detail. Up until now, you may have thought that all you had to do was puff up your chest and walk right next to the president, but it's far more complicated than that. Turns out protecting the president is a highly calculated task that requires more brain than brawn. Don't believe us? Well, take the Secret Service Inc. Lab, which contains more than 15,000 samples of pen, marker, and printer ink dating back to the 1920s. Sure, to the average Joe, it may feel like a library of ink is not essential to national security, but the Secret Service would disagree. If you recall, as of 1917, United States Congress passed a federal law that states that it it's a felony to threaten the president. And how do some of these threats come to the attention of the Secret Service? Through the mail, of course. Ultimately, having the ability to analyze ink can unlock a lot of important information pertaining to threats, or even worse, assassination attempts. In fact, some experts are so detailed they can analyze and confirm the year the letter was written. But aside from having a room full of ink and handwriting experts at your disposal, what else is entailed in the president's personal security detail? Well, despite being the most powerful person in the world, it's actually pretty tricky to get your hands on a decent meal. That's right, everything that enters the president's body is just as closely monitored. Let's say that the president has a fried chicken craving. Hmm. Well, you can bet that the kitchen staff has not only been meticulously hired, but also under strict restrictions when they enter and when they leave the White House kitchen. But getting a meal prepared into the White House is a no-brainer. What's really tricky is when the president wants to eat out or take out food. Let's say that the First Lady has a serious Domino's pizza craving. While the Secret Service can't just ask for the pizza to be delivered at the front door of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, instead the pizza is often ordered using a pseudonym and under a normal residential address. Then the Secret Secret Service allegedly waits, tips the driver, and drives it back into the West Wing. All that for a pizza with extra olives. Now, if the president wants to eat out at an Olive Garden, well, that's a whole nother story. While this claim is unconfirmed, multiple news sources have reported the fact that many presidents, like Obama, were assigned taste tester agents. Yeah, if anything made outside of the White House kitchen were to go into the president's mouth, it first had to pass the taste tester's standards. It's not that Obama was a picky eater, it's just an extra security measure in case someone decides to sneakily add rat poison to the food of the leader of the free world. Now I know what you're thinking. If you could have any Secret Service job, it would 100% be the president's taste tester. So what about the president's public appearances? Do we have to remind you where most assassination and assassination attempts occur? For this reason, whenever the president is announced to make a public appearance, there are days of preparation, even if it only entails a quick smile and wave in the lobby of a newly built hospital. You see, in 2011, the Atlantic did an unprecedented story on President Obama's security detail and all that it entails, especially when he makes a public appearance. Take Obama's address in New York City at the 65th United Nations General Assembly. Now, keep in mind that the measures set in place were not only there for the safety of the United States president, but also for the world's highest dignitaries and most respected leaders. According to the reporter, a nearby warehouse blocks away from the central location housed at least 100 armored limousines and SUVs as well as a number of crates containing hundreds of MP5 assault weapons and thousands of secure radios. In addition, a confidential command center was set up just a few blocks shy of the New York field office, which hosted a command center with 12 distinct radio channels set aside for the summit, all with high-level encryption keys. And to top it all off, the Secret Service set up a tactical command post in a secret location that hosted counter-assault teams, counter-sniper teams, and the hazardous material teams assigned to high-threat protectees. Rumors also floated around that each country's dignitaries had a collection of their own blood to stand by just in case of immediate medical attention. This is a trick the Secret Service learned after the assassination attempts on Ronald Reagan, who was riskily brought to the hospital with no security detail. Oh, and did 
I mention these 16 to 20 motorcade vehicles that transport the president from one place to another? The primary vehicle, the very heavy Cadillac referred to as the Beast, includes capabilities such as top-level ballistic armor, night vision and infrared driving systems, a sealed cabin with an independent air supply capable of enduring a nuclear or chemical attack, and a secure telephone and internet line. So how's all that sound to you? Stress-inducing? Well, that definitely encapsulates the characteristics of this job, but rest assured, a career as a Secret Service agent pays well, offers great health insurance benefits, and apparently excellent retirement benefits too. So think of it this way. It's a few years of stress and high adrenaline for lots of relaxing rounds of golf. Now you're enticed. Well, fingers crossed for your sake that the president you're assigned to is even-tempered and well-liked. Good luck with that one.